Dr. Siddhi Sukanta Roy has done her master's in commerce and has cleared the national eligibility test. She is a chartered financial analyst. She also holds a PhD degree in the subject of business policy and administration. She has been working as a core faculty, Department of BCom Accountancy and Finance at ML Dahanukar College of Commerce since 2009. Currently, she is the head of the department of BCom Accountancy and Finance. She has to her credit several research papers published in the renowned national and international peer reviewed journals. Her passion and love for teaching have made her roots strong in the field of education and research. Her doctoral study focused on understanding the financial literacy of senior college teachers affiliated with the University of Mumbai as its impact on their investment decision making through her study she has also strived to provide suggestions and recommendations to the teaching community college and institutions universities and management ugc and policy makers of the scheme to take corrective steps to enhance financial literacy of teacher let's welcome vidya vachaspati dr siddhi sukanta roy hello everyone this is dr siddhi sukanta roy from ml dhanukar college of commerce i have been associated with ml dhanukar college of commerce since 2009 currently I am designated as coordinator of BCom Accounting and Finance course. I have done my PhD and cleared my national eligibility test examination. I am also a chartered financial analyst. My core subjects are related to accountancy, finance, financial markets and taxation. It gives me immense pleasure to express my deep gratitude to ptva for giving me this opportunity and platform to showcase my research findings and talk to everyone about my research journey the my doctoral research topic is a study of financial literacy among teachers in senior colleges affiliated to the university of mumbai and its reflection on their investment decision at the outset it becomes very difficult for me to categorically pinpoint the day or any particular event why i have chosen this topic but generally during classroom discussions and more prominently the discussions we had in our staff room made me felt that though teachers are having subject expertise they have huge command over their language and subject but what we lack is 
probably the decision making power for our own selves it immensely you know uh, disturbed me thinking that the teachers were doing so much for the students teaching them the basic concept of saving doing so much are unable to take their own financial decisions especially when i speak about female teachers we are so much dependent upon either our partners our fathers basically the male members of our family this intrigued me to dwell deep into this topic where i could you know study what is the financial literacy of teachers and how it is impacting their investment decision making so then i got this opportunity to take up this project as my phd topic and i went ahead with this with the support of my guide dr kushpat jain now if you see financial markets are growing globally due to the lpg model everything became global so was investments we have a global integrated financial market though we have complex products there was a low level of awareness and knowledge about which products were suited to us basically a priority has to be for every nation to promote financial literacy among its citizens now when i speak about financial literacy i don't mean to say that whether you know what is a share whether you know what is a bond financial literacy in the true sense means that you are able to understand the complexities of every financial product or if not every financial product at least those financial products which are going to help us in our future planning the future planning goals could be child uh, could be for education for our children could be their marriage could be our retirement plan and even for some it could be probably wealth creation now this financial literacy cannot be imposed upon us once you know we start working this has to start at the very basic levels probably at high schools or maybe students at a very low level should be probably you know explain the concept of saving you know if you take a very simple example you know we all you know like giving gifts to our children in there we should be able to tell them that okay if we are giving you a gift maybe some part of the money you know could be saved for their future needs for this it becomes very important that our teachers are groomed and trained in that particular manners as we say teaching community is building the next generation basically the base of everything are teachers so it is very important that our teachers become the pioneers of promoting financial literacy so it becomes very essential for us to first understand how well the teachers are equipped to financially enable their students to take their decisions so that the spill over effect is on the students and society at large now if you see the objectives of my study were mainly revolving around financial planning financial goals the factors that were influencing the financial decisions very importantly i wanted to study about demographic variables that could be age gender marital status education level income level and so on and so forth my more my next objectives i studied were financial attitude financial knowledge and financial behavior which are the pioneers of any financial literacy model of a country lastly i also wanted to study what is the impact of financial literacy on investment decision making of our respondents in this case it was teachers after studying i have made tried to make few suggestions for you know probably how financial literacy can be strengthened among teachers based on these my objectives the hypothesis were demographic factors which i said already it included age gender and uh, your uh, educational background and so on and so forth i studied about annual saving to annual income ratio of investment objectives uh, which were capital gain wealth creation then i also spoke about investment objectives such as retirement planning income tax purpose which becomes very important for working individual because the first thing probably we want to invest is you know when we talk about is tax purpose then i also wanted to speak about the sources of information from where i have uh, gathered this information factors influencing our investment decision which spoke about uh, your return liquidity safety and also the one of the major factor which influences investment is risk 
नेक्स्ट आई ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू स्पीक अबाउट फाइनेंशियल एटीट्यूड फाइनेंशियल नॉलेज फाइनेंशियल बिहेवियर एंड लास्टली आई वॉन्टेड टू स्टडी हाउ फाइनेंशियल लिटरेसी हैज इम्पैक्टेड इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन मेकिंग ऑफ टीचर्स I basically used an exploratory and a descriptive research design. My universe was senior college teachers affiliated to University of Mumbai, and my sample was teachers, of course. I have used the Cochran's formula of variability to determine my sample size, but happened to be 384 respondents. For my study, I had considered 415 respondents. I ensured that I am covering. faculties teachers from all streams so i have gone to uh, commerce colleges science colleges arts arts and science commerce so that i have covered teachers from all backgrounds my hypotheses were you know divided into basically my dependent variable and independent variables my dependent variable was financial literacy independent variable were demographic factors annual saving investment objectives sources of information factors influencing decision financial attitude financial knowledge financial behavior and choice of investment now when i talk about my data collection method of course we use both primary and secondary data secondary data is for creating rol i will use primary data method of questionnaire my tool was divided into three parts first was demographic variables second was where i talk about the major parameters financial attitude financial knowledge financial behavior thirdly i spoke about choice of investment decision making i spoke about objectives of investor investment which are the factors that are influencing and the sources of getting investment avenues i also did the consistency test of data i used the cronbach alpha values and i and thereby i concluded that the variables are having high internal consistency for data analysis both descriptive and inferential analysis was used in descriptive we use simple statistical tools such as mean standard deviation count percentage frequency distribution pie diagram and so on inferential analysis i basically dwelled on one way anova independent sample t test and chi square test i will uh, do just do a quick run through my uh, hypothesis for you uh, for my hypothesis one i basically found out that uh, demographic factors play a major role when it comes to our study uh, naming a few in case of gender male teachers were more, more financial literate than female teachers when it came to age the uh, faculties who were in the age group of 35 to 40 45 were uh, more financial literate as compared to those you know around 25 or senior faculties when it came to education qualification uh we had we have phd's and probably teachers you know who have done professional courses they were more equipped to take their own decision when i speak about uh, my second hypothesis which is annual saving to annual income ratio we just realized uh, that faculties or teachers who are having a lower financial literacy probably saved less than 10% of their income those with moderate were able to save around 10 to 15 and those with hi high financial literacy were able to save more than 15% so this somehow went up to even 25 to 30% when i speak about my investment objectives uh, people who are having low financial literacy randomly just invested they really did not consider their investment objectives whereas those with moderate were more concerned about taxation purposes whereas teachers with high financial literacy kept in mind both they kept in mind tax purpose and they also believed in creating wealth or securing their future that means their retirement planning when i talk about sources of information uh, teachers with low financial literacy depended upon family heavily depend upon family relatives and friends so basically they're trying to gather information from the people who are just close to them moderate financial literate probably you know went through their these television channels they read through magazines financial papers and whereas those with high financial literacy were equipped to take their own decisions with the help of financial advisors when i speak about factors influencing investment decision return safety liquidity solvency were the factors which were different for all subset of uh, financial literate teachers for example those with low financial literacy uh, they considered return as a major factor those with moderate were uh, you know they were considering both return as well as their liquidity those with high were considered liquidity return as well as solvency but when i talk about uh, risk that was one factor which was common to all so probably 
teachers are not very much you know we, we prefer being risk averse so this was one factor which was almost same for all so everyone considered risk before making their investments uh, when i speak about financial attitude there's a vast difference between the teachers with low financial literacy and the ones with high financial literacy uh, when i speak about high teachers with high financial literacy they are more well versed with the, you know they they are into reading of research paper they are keeping their knowledge updated they are listening to probably you know good uh, news channels nowadays podcast has uh, become a very important source of gaining information whereas if you talk about uh, those with low financial literacy they don't have the right mindset probably to learn new things so that they can get a change in their financial attitude and when i talk about financial knowledge those with high had knowledge about uh, what are the basic credit card facilities available which financial products could be more lucrative in future they were more interested in in knowing you know that uh, what are the different products that are available for each you know level of uh, risk that they want to take whereas if you talk about low financial uh, li- teachers with low financial literacy their financial knowledge was also limited they were not aware of even basic products like probably shares bonds crypto etc when i talk about financial behavior it talks a lot about the way you are going to take your decision making if i talk about people with financial behavior with high financial literacy uh, they are paying their bills on time they know how investment has to be done they are doing investment both for tax purposes as well as they are doing their uh, investment for you know their wealth creation they are talking about retirement planning everything is in place where i teachers with low financial literacy are not apt with all this they are missing their dates they are not you know com- complying with their uh, probably the credit card payments or they are not even doing their sips properly so there's a vast difference between the behavior of both financial literacy of low and high when i talk about impact of financial literacy on investment decision making it was generally seen that you know since traditionally in india you know we've always heard about fd post office scheme so these were two schemes where everyone wanted to invest so be it a person of low financial literacy or a high financial literacy probably the setup and the culture we come from is that some part of income we really want that it should be invested in fds so that was where everyone was investing whereas if you see high financial literacy were going for more complex products they were more into shares they were into mutual fund they were into derivative products they were into bonds whereas if you see those with moderate or probably not going into shares debentures bond directly they were playing a safe bet of uh, mutual funds and when i talk about teachers with low financial literacy they prefer the traditional uh, investment patterns or probably they were going in for fd then they were going in for uh, post office schemes then you have this indira vikas patra nps etc now based on my study the findings that i had done and you know the various tools that i had used for uh, you know analyzing my data i intended to make few suggestions to the different stakeholders so basically i uh, you know try to make some suggestions for policy makers and colleges institution management university etc to, to begin with in case of policy makers uh, so these are the suggestions made by me so it was felt that the ugc and nsert should design and develop model curriculum you know where financial literacy should be more like a curriculum rather than an any add on course now appropriate pedagogical tools should be made which are including textbook you have digital tools different teaching materials should be provided because sometimes it so happens you know we know what to teach but how to teach also becomes difficult it is very d- d- important that we identify and educate teachers with lower financial literacy try to train them so that they become equipped not only to enhance their knowledge but also to pass on the knowledge to the students special attention should be given to various vulnerable groups like female teachers very young teachers teachers in higher age group and those teachers you know which do not have a regular or a, ha, are into lower income where they can be promoted to enhance their financial literacy uh, next suggestion could be to ugc hrdc they should start up with training programs conducted by hrdc to develop necessary teaching skills as i told you sometimes we know what to teach we even have the curriculum but the way it has to be imparted to students also is really important you know you know we have a lot of knowledge but that should seep into the young mind so this should be done 
special certificate program should be devised to train teachers and this training teacher should not be like a you know just a, probably a guest session or one or two session it should be a proper design program where teachers are trained probably every year and you know they are also upgraded with their knowledge uh, financial literacy has become the core of every nation if you see it is spoken about in every international meetings also because this is the crux of development of any economy so this UGC also should pay, pay heed to this issue. Also, when I talk about not only UGC, it's colleges and institutions also. Now, when you talk about workplace, we are major or most of the time we are spending in our, in our you know, in our colleges and institutions. So it becomes very important that financial education programs are initiated by our college or institution. Probably a short term certificate programs could be started or work for, you know, you have your proper education programs could be started where they are not only learning but they are also trained how to train the students uh, developing financial literacy programs as a part of csr also has become a very important thing now in fact that should be taken up where probably teachers and along with their students could go to you know some schools or other places where they feel you know the community needs to understand the importance of financial literacy as you see our college has already uh, gone cashless our uh, you know payment when you talk about admissions or any examination Everything is done online, so that should be incorporated by other colleges as well. Any kind of you know associations or clubs should be made. It could be a finance club or an investment club where you know they could be used in order to enhance their literacy and make others also participate. Now, when I talk about universities and management, it is very important that they develop financial competent teachers. Now, when I talk about teachers, non-teaching staff could also be accompanied because it so happens that, you know, we give a priority to our teachers. Of course, the topic also says so. But I feel if non-teaching staff is also incorporated, you know, and they could be imparted, it could help them also to take such decisions on their own. We can have participatory learning programs. You know, we have this BSc, NSc, we have RBI. These, we can come together, you know, tie up with them, have collaborative programs where they can also help us in providing them, providing us with the literature and the training to guide our students as well. Trading modules can be developed using the participatory learning program schedule. Conduct, we should be able to conduct out of college activities, you know, probably a money, a monetary museum visits we can have, like our college does have an RBI monetary museum. Uh, museum visits we can have educational games you can have a saving week you can have a you know like a mock trading thing we can have a demo investment app where these things can be used you know because students if you tell them to read you give them a manual you tell them to read they are not interested so these things can be learned by the teachers themselves first and then it can be imparted to the students major suggestions are for the teachers you know because before we tell the ugc should be doing this or the colleges should be doing this Teachers as such should come up with initiative to learn. This is very important, you know. You really cannot force someone to learn. You can take the horse to the water, but you cannot force the horse to drink. So it's the same way. Everything is in place, but it is very important that teachers participate as well as organize seminars, webinars, workshops, whatever can be done in the college for other teachers of other colleges and their students as well. Digital channels should be used as a medium of teaching. Now, in today's time, if you see, you cannot, you know, have this traditional method of chalk and board. So many digital channels can be used. We have these uh, mock trading uh, websites are there which allow us to do mock trading. So such things can be incorporated in classroom teaching as well. Teachers should be encouraged to use, read financial journals, understand the implication. We should be encouraged to write research. You know, and this will also promote not only a financial literacy, culture but also a research culture in the organization guidance and mentoring can be taken from representatives of banks companies financial institutions where they can you know we can tie up with them for some guest lectures for some sessions where they can train us they can train our students also most importantly it is very important for teachers to focus on their retirement planning as i said we talk about things but it becomes very important for us also to secure our future Few general suggestions were basically made that AI and chatbots can be used to improve financial skill now. So chatbots, if you see, have become a very regular thing. For this generation, AI chatbot is just a regular thing. 
then you can use online apps you have emi calculators you have ppf calculators you have calculators where you know you can just put in your income you can put in your risk level they will suggest you the type of investments that you also need to do so these things can be used in the classroom teaching as well you know probably a session can be taken during a lecture where we tell them okay you're not studying today anything let's you know try doing this you can ask the student to just put some dummy income their risk level then they can do as i told mock trading or investment apps can be used certification courses could be used probably these courses you know can get some validation probably the government also so students will also feel encouraged or teachers will also feel encouraged to use we can enroll for free online courses subscribe to financial newsletters read digital transaction should be promoted and it should be and told to the student that they are safe and secure it is you know the, those lacuencies which we are having the inhibition which people have that can be removed by promoting it also reading material in the form of pamphlet manuals all that can be provided to the teachers as well as the students after suggestion i would just go on to limitations of my study so geographically the study is restricted to the city of mumbai and suburban areas the sample is excluding teachers working in junior colleges since on school colleges since i have taken only senior level teachers data has been collected during that period so of course now the times have changed also time cost and physical limitation of the researcher was a major limitation I want to just give a few ways where I feel my research can contribute to the society as a whole. Promoting financial literacy among teachers creates a well-informed investor class. The research will also benefit various segment of society such as teachers, government, investment houses, banks, students, and society at large. This will help the teachers to take sound financial decision and formulate investment strategies in advance. as per their income expense saving pattern which is very important for retirement planning it also makes it easier for teachers to inculcate the financial literacy and inculcate them the habit of saving and investment planning it will facilitate the government also to evolve a suitable mechanism for implementing the financial literacy program to keep a close watch on their effects banks investment houses can market their investment products as per you know the requirement of the teachers it will help them the government also in promoting financial literacy if you see it also goes with in sync with what our government has been doing since the past few years from through their jandhan yojana and financial inclusion schemes financial lit literacy better decision making ability and making the right investment can improve financial well being of the country this will help us to improve financial stability and economic development of the country as a whole just to give a further scope of research the similar study can be conducted in probably an other geographical region a comparative study can be done between two or more cities or states different respondents could have been used i have used teachers probably someone else can use students you can use senior citizen working women you can use homemakers and various different aspects of financial literacy which probably could not be touched up on this research can also be used uh, to conclude i would just like to thank ptva to give me this opportunity again and i just hope that this will help and influence encourage you know teachers uh, individuals students whoever watches this uh, video to probably inculcate financial literacy and start taking your own investment decisions thank you vidyanena sadrusham pavitram ih vidyate vidyanena sadrusham pavitram ih vidyate vidyanena sadrusham pavitram ih vidyate